Hello and welcome to Gen Con. We're here for Magic's 25th anniversary. And while there's a pro tour a few states away, very important, happening in an hour or so, we have some business to take care of here. The last beta draft. So we have eight. <laughs> We have eight lucky folks here that won qualifiers throughout the weekend here at Gen Con. Kane DeWitt, Michael Grothy, Jonathan Brostoff, Heyman Patel, who you may recognize of having done this before in Las Vegas. <laughs> He's gotten to do two of these beta drafts, which is incredible. Philip Lee, Jeremy Denman, Derek Correa, and Devin Kepke. I'm Mike Turian. This is Aaron Forsyth. We'll be bringing you all the action as we open up 24 packs of beta, as, as we look for more power, hopefully our first Beta Black Lotus. We're gonna see it all happen live right now. All right. Alan Hockman, the TO here, will have the honors of opening these magnificent booster packs. No pressure. <laughs> 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 All right, now the cards will be laid out. We have Jump, Gray Ogre, Disenchant, Swamp, Unsummon, Psychic Venom, Mountain, Plains. Yes, there are tons of basic lands in these boosters. <laughs> Pestilence, Death Ward, Island, Island, Living Wall, which is an 06 <laughs> copper tablet. Or is that? Yep, copper tablet. Yeah. Wrath, Wrath of, God. of God. That's the rare. Michael, Michael has the honor of the first pick. Tell us about Wrath of God, Mike. Wrath of God, we have been seeing Wrath of God and variations on that for all 25 years of Magic. It is. It was one of the cards I first started playing, and I shuffled my Wrath of God very heavily. I played white green, and they're back in the early days of Magic. Those were my colors. Wrath of God, Balance. Those were my type of. Uh, those were my type of cards. Yes. Yeah, so Wrath of God destroys all creatures, and they can't be regenerated. <laughs> We are, we are standing right over the player's shoulders watching as they study the packs. Yep, so you'll notice the, these packs were not made for what we consider limited play by today's standards. There's a combined two power on all the creatures available in this pack. <laughs> and that is a, and a only vanilla 2-2 two -two for three. Only one, oh, only one of them can attack, and one card in this pack can kill both of those creatures. <laughs> <laughs> what does Copper Tablet do? Was question. The question is Copper Tablet, which is it does one damage to each player on his or her upkeep. So Michael takes the rare Wrath of God first. And it quickly puts it into a sleeve. <laughs> so Philip takes Pestilence, which is considered by many to be one of the most insane commons ever printed. Living Wall, the pick for Jeremy. Then the Grey Ogre. That's where we're at here, folks. Grey Ogre going fourth <laughs> by DeWitt. As Haymon studies the pack, we'll talk a little about, they're doing a Rochester draft today. So we're going to go around the table from Michael all the way to Jonathan, taking one pick each, and then from Jonathan back to, to Philip. <laughs> whatever. So Philip's going to be having the next pack open once all these basic lands are, are drafted one at a time. So we're taking some of these many lands already as the ninth pick. Yep. 
one of the exciting things to me about Gen Con this year is just seeing some of these same magic artists still having booths, still signing magic cards. Yoink. There's been, uh, I think Mark Poole has a booth yep. here, Wayne, yep. Wayne Reynolds. Wayne was not one of the original artists, but absolutely. Uh, absolutely. But the, I mean, ma yeah. uh, magic artists. Just oh yeah, there's general. tons of them here. Right. Uh, tons of everything about magic here at Gen Con for the 25th anniversary. Yeah, there's been, besides the birthday uh, events that these players played in to qualify, there's been Battle Bond, I played in the team trios event. While the, the, the Pro Tour is constructed, we did some M19 Limited. Nice. So, a lot of fun there. There's been Chaos Drafts firing. Yep. Chaos Drafts firing. The, uh, the Chaos Drafts had a birthday surprise where <coughs> at the start of each Chaos Draft, one player got to start off Rochester, or one table each got to start off dra drafting a pack of legends. Wow. Yeah, that was, that was pretty exciting to see opened up and a big surprise. I know Wizards employees have been going around opening up uh, and yeah. handing out packs of antiquities, Arabian Nights for oh, yeah. players yep. to I, I open up. I was fortunate enough to give a guy a pack of legends this weekend. Yeah. Okay. Alan is currently opening the second pack. I wonder if these packs still have that classic magic smell. Well, yeah, it was, uh, they were just talking about that here at the table. It's a slightly different smell, these old cards. After, after 25 years, it, uh... <laughs> yeah. it's like a fine vintage. Um, these card, like, I've heard players say, wow, these cards look old compared to normal magic cards. When I started playing, magic cards looked old. Right? They, had, they, they just had this old <clears throat> aesthetic to them. Like, this is an ancient well, I, I, object. I, I, yeah, I mean, even the... Even, even the starter decks sort of gave you that feel of, oh, this is your library. Right, this an, is an old this book. Is a book. Yeah. All right, here we are with pack number two. Um, Island, Flight, Grey Ogre again. Our friend is back. Disenchant Dis back. Yeah, Wall of Wood, Unsummon, Psychic Venom. Oh, 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 our first three power creature. It is the War Mammoth. War Mammoth. 3 3 Trampler for four. Another Death Ward, yep. which regenerates a creature as an instant. Oh. Channel. Channel. That's Channel is an uncommon. Siren's Call, which forces your opponent's creatures to attack. Mountain, and we have. There it is. Uh, Thought Lace. That beautiful eyeball. Thought Lace. What does that one do? Uh, Thought Lace, as in. At the time it was printed as an interrupt, could turn a spell or permanent blue. That's what it did. <laughs> it's Look out. That was actually my uh, first rare when I started playing Magic was Chaos Lace. Oh. And which is which, <coughs> which is the same the exact version. card except yes. it makes There's it red. a cycle one, one of the first cycles in Magic was <coughs> the lace cycle. And you could turn creatures white, blue, red, green or black. At rare. These are at five rare, rares. At rare. Uh, a, a fine combination with all the five circle of protections. Right. But very few actual other ways that the color of the cards matter. You can. Let's talk about one of the uncommons that's out here. Very powerful, famous magic card, Channel. Channel, yes. Channel is uh, one of the first combos in magic that people discovered was using Channel, Black Lotus, and Fireball to get a turn one kill. Right, it lets you pay your life as to get generic mana. So War Mammoth went first, but then Jeremy took that channel. I think he's and now we're on to Thought Lace as the third pick. He had a chance at a second Grey Ogre, but instead, instead that went to Haymont. All right. Uh, he's already got his way to deal damage. He went, he went with the blue rare. He must. <laughs> And someone was to pick from Derek. That's a card that we still see printed today quite often. Disenchant, one of the classic magic cards, it was just taken by Jonathan. Yeah, there's there's so many powerful artifacts uh, in the early days and enchantments that yep. having a disenchant handy was always always valuable. Oh yeah, yeah I expect that card to be in people's main decks for sure. The uh, the, the flexibility of killing enchantments or artifacts uh, is 
as we see, as we see the last final few cards taken, will be will be basic lands, death ward, and sirens call. Sirens call. So Dewitt gets the sirens call. So that's the card they were asking Oracle text on. Uh, it's a an instant that forces your opponent's creatures to attack you. Now, why would you ever want to do such a thing? Well, if <laughs> <laughs> if you have a good blocks, right? Oh, I'm going to make your one ones come in, and I'll block with my two twos. Yep. That can that can pay off. And then the coast is clear for you to to attack back. Maybe that card will do something cool this, in this draft. So as Alan opens pack three, uh, it's worth noting that Mike and I are standing here right behind the drafters. Uh, so we don't really get to speculate on what they should be taking. Uh, instead, we're just here. We are here as close to the action as we can be. That's right. Right. We are, we are standing over Jeremy's shoulder as he eagerly awaits what cards are about to be laid out on the table. Uh, Ooh, twiddle. Twiddle. Right. Will, will there be a time vault in this pack to combo with the twiddle? That is, oh, unholy string. That's awesome. Our friend from Dominaria, Lanamore Elves, originally printed in in Alpha. Yeah, I was going to say. I feel like he's our friend from Alpha, who's revisiting yeah, us true. in Dominaria. A two, two for two. Iron Claw works. Iron Claw works. Right. Unlike the three mana gray ogre. For two mana, you get a 2-2, two -two, but he does have a, a small drawback. Red Elemental Blast. Our first oh. banding okay. creature. Uh, oh. Pro Prodigal Sorcerer, commonly known as Tim. <laughs> no, I, that is not Chaos Orb, that is Wooden Sphere. Oh, now that card yeah. is sweet, Demonic Tutor. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, look at that. Our, our first piece of beta power. <laughs> Jeremy. Jeremy cannot be restrained. So he wants to take J Jeremy this is Mox so excited, Jet. But so Mox Jet is like a swamp. <laughs> that is. <laughs> that can be disenchanted. It can be disenchanted. You know, no. people, people like what they like. You, you can also play as many <laughs> moxes on one turn as possible. That's right. No, uh, and on Aussie mox jet, one of the the prize cards from this set, the, the power one of the power nine, the five moxes. They're zero man artifacts that tap for a color of mana. They're incredibly powerful. Play uh, mainstays of the vintage format. They're not even legal in any other format uh, because they're so ridiculously good, and they're incredibly rare collectors items and. So far, that's the, by far and away the most amazing card we've seen open. DeWitt does just fine for himself with a Demonic Tutor, second pick. And then uh, Lana War Elves went third, and then Tim. Yeah, this is by far the most uh, exciting pack we've seen so far, and already only three packs in, we've already seen a piece of, piece of power. I feel my I feel my heart racing. Yeah, that's why we're here. That's that's this is the, why we're here. Every, everybody is eagerly nodding, and, and the the energy level in the room is has jumped up two three notches just by, and it was already so high. Yeah, yeah. What was the what was the first mox that you owned? Um. I had three of them when I was, before I started working at Wizards uh, in a vintage deck. They, I had red, white, and blue, pearl, ruby, and sapphire, but my deck was unfortunately stolen from me at a local event. It's taken me years to reassemble a collection of those cards. But I'm slowly working on it. Still not done yet. How about you? Uh, it was a mox ruby. I remember my cousin Nate Heiss uh, called me up and, and said, said he, he could get us a Mox Ruby. And I was like, let's do it. Let's. And that was, so, this is when they had already become famously yeah, we, powerful. We, yeah, Nate and I started playing during the Dark and Revised. And so, uh, all, all of those cards were out of print, right? I've never, 
Have you ever opened a pack of beta? Not beta. I've opened an unlimited yeah, starter, <laughs> which I won at a tournament before. My rares were like Kudzu and Never Neural's disc. I actually remember oh, quite clearly. Yeah. yeah, there. <laughs> but nothing, uh, nothing quite like a Mox. All right. Well, are we going to outdo this Mox jet? It, that, that would be pretty tough, but but it is possible. There are. We still have, we have not opened a Beta Black Lotus. Oh, that's true. They did open one in, uh, in uh, Chiba. Yeah, unlimited. Unlimited, unlimited. one. Mm -hmm. So if any of you guys watched the Silver Showcase, which happened on Thursday, which was an invitational event that was happened at the Pro Tour, those cards were given to charity. These cards are not right. being given these to charity. Cards, unless the players choose to. Right, no, but these cards are for keeps. So that mocks. That is now Jeremy's. Yeah, that's now. Classic. <laughs> it is already in a sleeve and in a hard case sleeve. It is. <laughs> okay, here we go. Pack number four. This fourth pack. Giant, Giant growth. growth. Yep. A, a well-designed card, Giant Growth. We still use it today quite often. So Sea Serpent is a six I mean, mana, six six. It can only attack <laughs> if your opponent has islands. Is it a six six or a five? A six, six. Oh, five 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 five. five, five. Okay, You're right. Five. Six right. six would be. That would be far too good. There's Stone Rain, one of the most uh, reprinted cards of all time. Holy Strength plus one plus two to as an enchantment, or an aura, as it's now known. Santa Monster, Monster, a very good creature. Uh, Dragon Whelp. <laughs> so we see two two four mana flyers here at Uncommon. So meddling him? Yep, an Island Sanctuary. Island Sanctuary. So that's a crazy card, Island Sanctuary. The, the players immediately say, what's that do? So I will pull up Island Sanctuary here so we can describe that one to you. <coughs> the real words, we meaning the words that are in Oracle right now. Uh, if you would draw a card during your draw step, instead you may skip that draw. All right, so you can bypass your own draw step. Why would you want to do this? If you do, until your next turn, you can't be attacked except by creatures with flying and or island walk. So it shuts off ground creatures from attacking you so long as you're willing to give up drawing cards. Right. That could? It's a two mana white enchantment. One of the original strategies in Magic was decking your opponent, not only when you're playing with so many 1-1 one, one, and 2-2 two, two creatures, and by so many I mean so few. Right. Uh, the <coughs> using cards like Millstone, or Island Sanctuary was it's a, it's a way to win. So there are two four mana flyers at Uncommon in this pack, Dragon Whelp and Phantom Monster, which I think would still be quite good even in today's limited formats. Um, at Common in beta, there were only two flying creatures, both of which were one ones. There's Mesa Pegasus and Scrib Sprite. So, we think we're used to when we draft now having all kinds of flyers at common and three power flyers and wind drakes and whatnot. That was not the case then. Um, so these two guys are they, they dominate premium. the sky. They're premium. Right. One of the things about Dragon Whelp that I've always enjoyed is uh, we spend a lot of time at Wizards. Both Aaron and I work for Wizards. Uh, looking about player acquisition, and Dragon Whelp does a great job about teaching activated abilities, because it says it can't be played more than three times before the Dragon Whelp explodes, and so players realize, oh, I can activate abilities more than once. Right, right. It just says they are R colon, like a red mana colon, and right. Or, or players, when they learn, think they can only do that once a turn, and Dragon Whelp Dragon Whelp points always out that you can do it more. Yeah, it teaches about valuable lesson. So a couple other cards they're talking Jeremy about. Jeremy uh, takes the dragon, the dragon whelp as the first pick, and then the phantom monster. Haymont hey took. Dewitt took the yeah, took the. Oh yeah, sorry, Dewitt. Haymont took the phantom monster. Sea serpent. So Nettling Imp is the black card. Um, it's a three mana one one that can be tapped to make a creature attack. Again, we talked about that earlier with false orders. That can be good to march smaller creatures into your bigger blockers. And then False Orders is the red card up in the corner. Um, bizarre common, for sure. That, uh... Bizarre. Uh, it's, Aaron's looking at the Oracle text right now, and it's, it's quite a mouthful. 
it changes how something is blocking. Let's just leave it at that's, that. That's <laughs> <laughs> Philip takes old standby giant growth. And on the wheel, Jeremy gets to nettling it. Now, does Nettlingham fly? It looks like it flies in the art. No, it does not. That, that was, that's definitely been a lesson we've taken to heart. <laughs> if like, you put wings on a creature, it should fly. Yeah. We, we spend a lot of time looking at art and saying, does this look like it flies? <laughs> Maybe we should give it flying. <laughs> I think the classic card for that is Whippoorwill. Yeah, they were, uh, I saw some Paulo Vitor on Twitter. Twitter talking about Petra Sphinx from Legends, worried about that coming up in the Silver Showcase, which is another one. It's a enormous set of wings on this creature. Doesn't fly. All right. So while this is Haymont's first pack today, he was a participant in the Las Vegas. Yeah. The Las Vegas beta draft. I said the, the best card he got there was a lightning bolt, so we'll see. Perhaps will be a, a second bolt as he works on his set of four, <laughs> or something more exciting. Something, perhaps. yeah. I'm quite jealous of Alan. I haven't opened a single pack of beta <laughs> in my life, and he's now opened four in five minutes. Five, five. <laughs> oh, five. This is five in five minutes. <laughs> Oh, oh, here we go. Two, two, two basic lands so far. Third basic land. So the la there are so many lands in these packs because that's how you got them, right? There weren't land stations. There weren't. Right. You had you had to open up starter decks. There weren't years decks. of lands lying around from earlier sets. This was it. This yeah. You wanted to build a deck. You needed lands, and you got them out of your packs at a ratio about what you would use them in your decks. So that's why there's uh, right four, f four, five, six lands in a pack. So you called it. Haymont hey, oh, did in fact he, he get a could, lightning bolt in his pack. He could have two beta lightning bolts in his collection. But the, okay, we're we are now up to six basic lands. Now, you can actually get the basic land as the rare. Right, their island was on the rare sheet. So, swords to plowshares. Swords to plowshares, an instant, it uh, removes the exile's uh, target creature, and, oh, there's a royal assassin. Uh, back, back to swords to plowshares, and the, the controller gains life. Uh, one of the top removal spells, and another one that we've seen throughout the years of Magic right. still yeah. holds up. And it still gets played in uh, Legacy somewhat today. Uh, it's a card that took a while for people to appreciate. It's like, why would I want to give my opponent life? But the ability to deal with any creature for one mana right. is, so it, is it, incredible. It's a, such, a great, such a great value from a gameplay perspective, and, you know, and, it, and it kills, for instance, one of the things that it removes is that Royal Assassin. That is the first pick, the Royal Assassin. Well, Haymont takes the Royal. It's a three mana one one that has tap colon destroy target tapped creature. So it is brutal uh, when you, your opponent's trying to attack you and you can just murder anything that becomes tapped. Uh, it's a card we've reprinted quite a few times and I know that when I st first started playing it was kind of the scourge of, uh, of you know, the casual player's decks. It just was such a wrecking ball. Yeah, uh, another, another great combo in Magic was with Icy, Mi Mini Icy Manipulator and Royal Assassin where you wouldn't even have to be attacked. You could just tap the creature and kill it. That's happened to me many hundreds of times in my magic playing days. So Philip took an interesting card, Death Grip. It's a black enchantment that has black, black, colon, counter target green spell. It's just an absurd line of text. That is, <laughs> it makes it very hard for the green mage to do anything. You are, oh, I'd like to cast a spell. I actually do have two black mana available. Right. Uh, you can I'll counter multiple spells. spells a turn if you have enough mana. It just makes, yes, yeah. it's a, what a nightmare for <coughs> green decks. Affectionately known as color hosers because that color basically cannot do anything. Beta is filled with powerful color hosers. Uh, Death Grip has its mirror card in Life Grip, which is the green version. It counters yeah. black spells, yeah. Yep, for green, green. So the last spell being taken, last card probably being taken out of this pack. Iron Star was one of the first 
cards. I th oh, he's thinking about Iron Star Forest. He does go for the Iron Star. Right, you were telling a story about this at our panel earlier this weekend. Yeah, we did. As part of the, the Gen Con 25th anniversary celebration, uh, we did a, a panel with myself, Aaron, Elaine Chase, and Mark Purvis, and we were talking about how we started playing Magic. And uh, for me, I went down uh, with my school group to Georgia, and we each were handed a monocolor deck that the, the person built. And I couldn't figure, I had the red deck, and I couldn't figure out why do I want to gain life with red. Like, it, like Lightning Bolt. You figured Bolt, that out right away. Yeah. Right, right away, right away. I was, Lightning Bolt I really enjoyed. And the, the, the white player and the blue player, they love their ivory cup. And the, you know, the crystal green player, rod, yeah. yeah, crystal rod, wooden sphere for green. Yeah. Uh, but I was just, I was just confused. <laughs> All right, we're on the Devin here. Devin got the bolt out of that last pack, so he's. Maybe looking for more red goodies here. Yep, circle of protection green. There were five circle of protections in common in white, so you could pretend, prevent yourself from getting damaged by just about anything. Giant spider, a card we've reprinted many, many times. 2 4 reach creature. A very good card. In limited. So this is Devin's pack that we're yep. on right now? And he said he doesn't want a Black Lotus because he wants that giant spider. <laughs> so we will, we'll see. We'll see if it is a Black Lotus. We'll see if he's true to his word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a Wall of Ice. A, 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 07 a, Defender. A classic name for a green card there. <laughs> Blue, Ward. Blue Ward. Oh, I uh, And Death Lace. As you were saying. Uh, the, the cycle of laces, we have seen our second lace. This is death lace. Uh, the, sure does. the blue ward co does combo with the thought lace that we saw earlier today. So, so we'll see who... That is an abysmal combo, Mike. Who, who, got, that, who got that thought lace? Was it... Do it. Yeah. yeah, it is a combo. We're, we're not allowed to give strategy advice. The players can, <laughs> the players can overhear us, uh, so we're, we're not giving any strategy advice. It is certainly, it is, it is not good advice. It is not good advice. Yeah, it's, it's not good strategy advice, that's for sure. <laughs> but that's what people used to do with these cards, try to change colors of things and use these weird color hosers to right. interact I mean, with them. I mean, these were all the cards that existed, right? I, at, at the time that it was printed, and also interestingly, the four of rule wasn't a rule in many. Uh, often, made, there were many house rules about how many certain cards you could play, right? But uh, I started playing. Yeah, I think we both started playing after that had been cleared up. Yeah, right. With the players discovering you could use Black Lotus and Wheel of Fortune and, and Time Twister. And time Twister. And, right. Yeah. That that was solved relatively quickly by the players in the wild. Well, one of the things Richard always talked about was he didn't expect the game to, he didn't expect players to have card collections as large as they do now. He was expecting players to get one, two starter decks, a couple booster packs, and that would be their entire magic collection. And then trade for certain colors of things or whatever, yep. Right, so things like card limits weren't even, weren't even a consideration. I mean, magic was so innovation so innovative and so groundbreaking that a lot of the things that we take for granted nowadays, right. they, they, they had never had any exposure. Right. They had to learn the hard way how to make it work right. Do you guys remember the story of Tim Prodigal Sorcerer? Why it has the name Tim? Tim Prodigal Sorcerer. So uh, Jonathan's asked us why is the name Tim. It's from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. There was a character played by John Cleese whose name was Tim the Enchanter. Ridiculous thing, ridiculous. Uh, and the likeness was drawn between the, the charmingly goofy art of Prodigal Sorcerer and, and that character. So that card is known as Tim, and even today people call things that tap to deal one damage Tims, and it's a, you know, a, a long story often to explain to people why that's the word we use. But that's the story. It would, it would be like having a stream called Team J-Bro, which is Jonathan's stream. Oh. 
<laughs> about as ridiculous as that. <laughs> right? We've, ar we've, already seen, we've already seen One Piece of Power. Jeremy still has that Mox Jet sitting in front of us. Is that weakness? Weakness, minus two, minus one aura for one mana. So this is uh, Derek's pack, seventh pack. Giant Spider again. I can I can see I can see his leg, his leg, going up and down nervously. nervously. Tweeting, yep. Yeah, there, he, Derek is definitely wow. anticipating. There, there's a lot of forest, a lot, a whole row of basic lands in the middle. Oh, there's oh, a drain life. Oh, the dealer and, reveals the drain life. And, and, and semi dealer, <laughs> regeneration. Oh, air elemental, another. Another you may recognize player. from Ixalan. Oh, oh, Soul Ring. That is a Woo! insanely powerful Soul magic card, Soul Ring. Commander staple, one man artifact that taps that for two dingus. colorless. A dingus egg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can we get the Orko text on uh, uh, similar? Oh, similar. Yeah. Aaron also yeah. is going to. I, I, I don't. I, don't. I, I believe it redirects damage. Yeah, and, so. <laughs> yes, anyway. so, so Soaring starts out for only one mana. You can play it, and it'll give you two mana. So while not considered part of the power nine, it actually gives two mana for the... Right, so you it accelerates you at an incredible rate. And it was actually just an uncommon. Yeah, yeah so a crazy generous card in uncommon. So drain li other notable cards, Drain Life is uh, an X spell, meaning you can pay as much as you want to uh, deal X damage to target creature or player, and you gain X life, but the X must all be black mana. So, so Soul Ring is, is Derek's first pick. Air, Air Elemental to Jonathan. Air Elemental you may recognize from Ixalan. <laughs> we reprinted that one recently as well. Giant Spider, speaking of cards that are reprinted. Yep. Giant Spider, and I believe has been printed almost 20 times, maybe even 21. It, it was in the most consecutive core sets. Yeah. So the rare here was Dingusig, yeah, which is, does two damage um, when to a player whenever one of their lands is put in the graveyard. Often comboed in the early days with Armageddon, which destroys all lands, and you could generate a lot of damage that way. It's definitely a griefer card, but one you have to combo with other cards to have it do anything at all. No. There weren't anything like fetch lands back in the day, so no lands went to the graveyard by themselves. You actually had to actively force that to happen through cards like Stone Rain. Or right, Armageddon. Stone Rain, Armageddon. <laughs> so Simulacrum was the weirdo that just got picked up. Uh, We'll, we'll double check exactly how that works. When did the when did the set turn from tap to the, the symbol tap? That was in revised. Revised, but it was, revised was when the tap symbol was first introduced. Yeah, it was a T. Yeah, so this is yeah. So, uh, yeah. John, John, oh, we're still on simulacrum. Uh, so it's one B instant. You gain life equal to the damage dealt to you this turn, and then Simulacrum deals damage to target creature you control equal to the damage dealt to you this turn. So basically, you are <coughs> redirecting the damage. In a, in a sense, you're redirecting the damage. You take the damage. You take the damage, then you gain the life. So that evens out for you. Evens out for you, but then your creature... Uh, Takes the so damage it, is, it is not like reverse damage. Not like reverse damage where you, you gain the life. Right, you prevent instead. the damage and gain the life. Yeah, this oh, there's a sinkhole. Speaking of ways, ways Speaking for of lands ridiculous to commons. Was it the Dingus Egg player who's excited about yeah. the sinkhole? Yeah. Uh, this is Jonathan's first pack. Uh, Jonathan will have this pack and then a second pack as we head back. But this is Jonathan's first pack. Fog up in the corner. We haven't seen one of those yet. Let's prevent all combat damage for one mana. Another another card that we see many variations of, including the original Fog. Yeah, we've seen the uh, Fog deck do well at the Pro Tour this weekend in Standard, actually, with some two-mana versions of Fog. Another common, Pestilence. 
Uh, evil, evil presence. presence. Yep. Turning lands to swamps. There's a lot of changing. Yes. Changing colors, changing is that land. That Throne types. of Bone? Is that the, is Another there? one of the Lucky Charm cycle. Oh, and there we have Mana Short. Yep. Okay. A beautiful card, one of my favorite pieces of art from the original. It's just a picture of a rose. It's a picture, yep. So that's the rare. It uh, taps all your opponent's lands and empties their mana pool. Right. Yeah, it's so an instant. It's an instant, so you can do this during the upkeep, and then they won't, they won't have any mana for that turn. It's not, not as powerful, perhaps, as Time Walk, but it does, it does uh, at least prevent them from casting Shuts spells. Shuts down right? a turn, yeah. Yeah, right. My wife also watches The Bachelor and Bachelorette, so it's a little... Oh, the rose. Is yeah, the, ro the rose. It's a, it's a rose ceremony we're at right now. Who will he give the rose to? Oh, there you go. Michael, <laughs> Michael gets the rose. You get to stay for another week, Michael. <laughs> yeah, Sinkhole went third pick. This enchant continues to be a popular card. What was He's, the first pick, uh, Jonathan, on that deck? The so w were there any creatures in this pack? I believe the answer is no. There were no creatures in this pack. <laughs> All right. There were there were ways to turn lands into swamps <laughs> and, and, and swamps and ways to kill, and the, enchant swamps. Creatures. And ways to kill the swamps and enchant creatures and ways to prevent combat damage, <laughs> but no ways to deal combat damage. <laughs> so uh, these decks are going to be a little cobbled together. I think that's how come we're watching the draft today and then immediately going to the Pro Tour to start the, the Pro Tour coverage because they're playing exciting formats to watch like Legacy, Modern, and Standard. <laughs> right. Some of these decks are going to be 20 lands, multiple colors, trying to scratch and claw for every playable creature to find ways to damage the opponent. Yes, Throne of Bone. So another cycle like Iron Star, Wooden Sphere. There's five of these at Uncommon, one mana artifacts that let you gain a life whenever any player plays a spell of that of a given color. Yeah, there was a lot of design of cycles. That was a very popular theme. Or pairs, right? There's Unholy Strength and Holy Strength. We saw Holy Strength in this pack. The, the black version gives plus two, plus one. The white version, plus one, plus two. Uh, right, red <laughs> Elemental Blast, Blue Elemental Blast. Um, black and white knight, which we haven't seen yet, but those were uncommons in the set. <laughs> life, life, force, and death grip. The yeah. color hosers often came right. in pairs. Right, there's, uh, well, gloom, gloom and karma are, are different. Once again, the color pie was a, a, big, uh, a big piece of the design. But the players are asking to keep their wrappers. They're great souvenirs for this event. <laughs> yeah. Lots of giant spiders here today. So yeah, Jonathan's second pack here. This is pack nine. We're gonna go back around the circle the other way. <laughs> Enough once, lands. Once again, oh, we're up to five, five basic lands Sunburst in a row. Sunburst has been achieved. Oh, another, <laughs> our second lightning bolt of the day. Oh, there, there's a counterspell was uncommon in this set, so we, we may we may see Fro frozen shade for our first frozen shade appearance. Right, so Frozen Shades of three mana, zero one that can pump for black mana. <coughs> Many of the black cards in this set really demanded a commitment to black. Right, we saw Drain Life earlier, another one. Uh, uh, oh, our, uh, our first Hypnotic Spectre. Uh, two two flyer for one BB. Oh. There's a reverse damage. They're asking for uh, some oracle text. Uh, Hypnotic Specter. We really see, while common didn't have many flyers, we've seen now an uncommon. Uh, another, another, quite a bit. There's quite, quite a, a bit, bit of good ones, yeah. Right, they're air elemental now, Hypnotic Specter. When it, when it hits your opponent, they discard a card at random. That's really crazy. Right, right we saw f Phantom Monster Dragon. Well, we haven't even seen the two big ones, uh, Sarah Angel and Sengir Vampire. There were lots of great uncommon flyers in the set for sure. Yeah, these cards don't have uh, expansion symbols on them. And so while we're used to cards where we can see what cards are rare, uncommon, and common, players often didn't know. And, and there was no very little information out there. Right. And so cards like Sarah Angel, Hypnotic Spectre, Sanger Vampire were often mistaken for rares because... Right, it would certainly seem more powerful than Thought Lace. Right, or reverse, or reverse damage. 
Right. I, I even when I started playing, I thought uh, Siren's Call was rare. It just seemed like a rare card because it had so many words on it, and it was so weird. Uh, Reverse Damage was one of the first cards I was really fell in love with as a Magic player. Uh, a, a lot of a lot of my friends would play cards like Fireball and Disintegrate, and so Reverse Damage. It just it was amazing <laughs> versus those. Uh, the comment is that uh, she looks like Cher. I don't, I don't think the artist was. Uh, Inspired by Cher, but I can I do see some resemblance. It is strange art. It's like a woman happily looking at the camera. Uh, I'm not sure how the damage is being reversed there. Maybe just through her charm. But uh, Philip got that card pretty late. <laughs> One of the things I've enjoyed about working at Wizards is. Uh, on occasion, we get to work with magic artists that either directly work with wizards or come in for uh, concept pushes. And so it's, all, it's always just such a such a fun experience to see the talent and the effort they put in. Yeah, I often joke with some of the art directors at work that I thought I was a good artist, my, per, me personally, until I got to work here and it just at Wizards and just yeah. The, as you've seen from the illustrations on, in our various games, the talent that we employ, uh, it's tumbling how, how amazing they are. <coughs> All right, pack 10, here we go. This is Derek's second pack, I believe. So how from beyond? Another X spell, a common X spell. Right. Uh, it's, a, it's an instant, target creature gets plus X plus O. Uh, oh, our second sinkhole. Yeah. Well, Stone Rain, this, this is the land destruction special pack. Stone Rain to our sorcery, destroy target land. You can raise dead if you assume, if you have any creatures, which again, this pack so far is whiffing on creatures. Water, Water elemental. elemental. All right. Soul net. Soul net. Whenever a uh, creature dies, you can pay a mana to gain a life. Copy art. Oh, a copy artifact for the rare. It's, a, it's quite an exciting rare. It, being able to copy some of these super powerful artifacts is. All right. It's a 1U enchantment that uh, effectively a clone for artifacts. So, Water Elemental is the card that was. That was the first pick right by away. Derek. As the only creature in the pack, and it's a five mana five for it in blue, which is which, yeah. quite aggressive stats for blue even even today, I think. Yeah, another paired card. There was also Fire Elemental in beta, as well as Earth Elemental. So Fire Elemental three R R five four, and Earth Elemental five mana four five. Right. So, but for blue, blue air, just air elemental. Clearly, the best of those four elementals. Oh yeah, it the has air flying. elemental. Yes, yeah, we saw uh, that earlier. Yeah, but water elemental, we've reprinted all f all three of the other four. But water elemental, we haven't reprinted in years because its stats are just so not blue. So five power for five mana is just a really good deal. It's interesting. It's interesting to see as uh, typically the creatures we've been seeing here aren't as good as we make now, but the land destruction we've seen is actually far better <laughs> That's right. than. Yep. And then we saw, uh, then we see nowadays, right? I, I'd expect a Stone Rain variant to cost four mana uh, in, in current magic, where That's right. here it was only three. We definitely refine the strategies that we, that we push forward for our, our players to enjoy. Land, land destruction, I think, is a cause of much frustration and angst uh, and yeah, I, I, I definitely grew up in the land destruction era of Magic and played land destruction decks myself to some success. And I often joke that casting spells is a privilege and not a right. <laughs> well, as, as my favorite card in Magic is Wasteland, uh, I think I'd agree with you. <laughs> you know, if, you play, if, you pay, if you play fair and you only pay basic lands, Wasteland won't, won't impact you. But uh, if you decide to play a non-basic, well, I've decided to play Wasteland. So they're playing Legacy at the Pro Tour this weekend that I saw some people on social media talking about. You, know, you, you, you just can't expect to get to three mana in some of these matchups in Legacy because of the Wastelands and Stifles and other things that are going on there to keep your mana base down. So yeah, that's more reminiscent of what Magic was like in the really early days. 
Okay, we haven't seen a Herlin Minotaur uh, yet out of these packs, I don't believe. So, <laughs> the face of early magic, early Minotaur. I remember players going around in nightmare jackets and Herlin yeah. Minotaur. <laughs> yeah, it always. The, the duelist ads back in the day always featured the Pearly Minotaur. So Pearl Unicorn, the white gray ogre. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, there's Red, Red Ward. Ward. Yeah. Tunnel. Tunnel. Oh, Tunnel. Destroy a wall. Destroy a wall, yeah. We have Elvish Archers. A 2 that, 1 first striker. At rare. At, what's that? At rare. At rare. 2 1 first striker at rare. Uh, actually, an alpha was printed as a 1 2, <laughs> and then in beta it was reversed, reversed to a 2 1. I'm not sure if that was uh, an intentional revision or it was a misprint originally. Do you have, happen to know? I, I don't know. I, I, I have to think that it was an error the first time and that they always meant it to be a 2 1. Uh, the, I don't uh, think it's just uh, like, oh wow, people, the, people don't think this card is powerful enough. Let's just randomly change it. This, this is how we'll tweak this one. <laughs> like that. Uh, there were other, there were other some uh, misprints, uh, notably uh, while we haven't seen a dual land yet in these beta packs. No, uh, Volcanic Island is only available uh, in beta and unlimited. Right, not in alpha. Not in revised. <laughs> so Haymont took Grey Ogre second. That's where we're at in this yeah, format. <laughs> well, I'm interested to see if I believe it's. Philip has the living wall. Will he take Tunnel to, to defend it? Does Tunnel prevent regeneration? Yes. It does prevent regeneration. So living yes. wall is in trouble. It unplayable, it unplayable if it didn't prevent regeneration is the, the comment from the players. So Jeremy took the uh, Pearl Unicorn fourth, hoping to power that out on turn two with right. his mocks. Right. The, I mean, you can see why Elvish Archer is a rare. As a second pick, it kills both the third pick Grey Ogre and the fourth pick Pearl Unicorn. There seems to be a momentary pause as thinking, will he take the red ward? It, it looks like, it, no, no, the last minute switch to death ward. So it's interesting that there's the five wards, but then there's also death ward, which has nothing to do with protection. <laughs> it just, Oh, the tunnel! Oh, the tunnel was taken by Jonathan. He's he's looking very excited. I didn't know if it was gonna come through. Yeah, that's there's a lot of strategy in drafts. Like, what cards, <laughs> what cards will you wheel? Right. How do you make sure your own strategy doesn't get hosed, hosed too badly by what you've passed to your neighbors? This is. Devin, this, is this Devin's pack? I think it's Haymont's pack now, so Haymont's this is pack. the uh, halfway point, the 12th pack. All right, we've seen no no dual lands yet. We have seen a Mox Jet. Jeremy got... We haven't seen any Fireballs Mox or jet. Disintegrates yet. Which That's is, true, yeah. Which is kind of the standout commons. There's two red X spells that we do we, we, oh, another, a third sinkhole, I believe. We've also seen a number of Pestilence. Pestilence is interesting because, well, it sits out in... Can deal damage. It goes away at the end of the turn if you don't have any if there, creatures. If on the there player. are no creatures left, that's right. Right. So it it does a good job for B deals damage to creatures and players, but wipes away. Oh, Ladruid. Ladruid's a three mana one one that taps to untap a land. And then our third lace. Our third lace. Will we collect them all by the end of this draft? This is pure lace. It, it's a, it was an interrupt, now an instant. Uh, target spell or permanent becomes white. That's good with your circle of protections in white ward. All right, they're going over camouflage now. It's an uncommon green instant. Basically what it says is your opponent blocks at random. Yeah. It's a ton of words. It's like playing against a bad magic player, <laughs> but you have to use a card to do it. it it's pretty right. Your opponent becomes bad this turn. <laughs> right, right. It's like, will they, will they block right? They might. It's random. <laughs> so.
So Sea, sea Serpent is a, uh, did it, was it printed with Island Home on it? Or no, is that no, a label? That was a la we later changed the, that phrase into a keyword, Island Home. But it, it says, it dies if you don't control any islands, and it can't attack unless your opponent has any islands. And, and, and Haymont actually did take it first. It's a 5-5 five, five for 6. Uh, as long as you have an island, you keep it alive. And so that's definitely a drawback to playing islands is it unlocks a six mana five five, which is far bigger than almost any creature we've seen today. Right, and there is a common in the set, uh, Phantasmal Terrain, which is a two mana enchant land that can turn a land into another type of land. It often was the way to get your sea serpent to attack, was to give your opponent an island using that card. Yeah, I don't think we've seen one of those yet today, though. Yeah, you can tell the early designers built in some of these combos for players to discover. What they didn't build in was a lot of power in the, the, <laughs> in the creatures. creature use of common. It was not great. But it really did mean that games of magic were f far slower to develop, and you could pull off some of these more eccentric combos because... Right, you, were, you weren't under constant pressure, yeah. Games were offered slower develop in the old days because people wouldn't play nearly enough lands to cast their spells a year. Mm. That, is, that is true. It's also a reason that I think people didn't appreciate the mocks as early on was because if you're not playing enough lands, the power of the mocks it, it's, 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 dimini it's, dimin it's diminished and so it makes it hard to understand. I think we're about to see our first shatter. We get, we get a sneak preview of that uh -oh. the pack as it's open. There it is. So there's shatter in red and disenchant in white. Our second, our second elf. Okay, Even though this is the second iron clock orc that's open, there's still discussion about what it does. Right, it can't block anything that would kill it. It's basically a good way to think about that card. I enjoyed this weekend at Gen Con, uh, the hotel we're staying at. Had both a pyroblast punch and a hydroblast punch. Or red elemental blast was the uh, original pyroblast. Another channel. And sec our second channel. That is a living artifact. Living oh, artifact. So living artifact is a, another enchantment now now known as an aura. I believe you have to take damage. The players are speculating about what it does. Everyone's looking up living artifact. Our rare here, this big green goofy thing held in a cage, living artifact, enchant artifact. Whenever you're dealt damage, put that many vitality counters on living artifact. It doesn't actually say that on the card, but now that's what it does. But any of your upkeep, you may remove a vitality counter to gain one life. So, so you know the card Sun Droplet from Mirrodin? Yes, I do know this. It's kind of like a very bad version of that card. What I would enjoy doing with it was putting multiple living artifacts on typically my living wall. And then when I took damage, I would then take one damage, get two counters, well, not counters at the right, time, and, but, gain two. and then wow. gain two life. Right. So and the flavor of the living wall being a living, living artifact, that's incredible. That is, it is. <laughs> you can see what they've done there. <laughs> that was not first picked. What was the first pick? Frozen Shade. Frozen, yeah, frozen Shade? Frozen, Frozen Shade would, then the elves go second. And then Channel. And channel, yeah. So, uh, I remember having, I believe it was German revised channels, is how I got Black Border channels. <laughs> and it was always fun getting foreign cards early on. We also had uh, Italian legends. Right. And there was just a lot of speculation about what the cards even did. Right, right. You, you this just, was before the internet was very robust at all, and it was hard to find. Right, very hard to find information, and so you would get a card like Channel, or uh, I remember from Legends, Glyph of Destruction, a ton of words on it, and it says in the text, it's all Italian, and then it says plus 10, plus zero. <laughs> and we were just so excited. It's like we didn't know the rest of the card, but we <laughs> knew that for one red mana, you could give plus 10, plus zero. And, you, didn't, uh, you didn't refer to Scry Magazine for the wording or whatever? That, yeah, Scry Magazine wasn't, uh, wasn't available to us. So, 
All right, the players are divvying up all these lands. And there was, there was no translation services like there are today where you could just paste text into Google right. and get a, uh, a translation. So, so I'll say we had to use our imagination. <laughs> much, much like with banding, we had to use our imagination. Oh, there's, I believe, Earthbind. Oh, in right, our we're back to Jeremy here. He of the Mox Jet. The Mox Jet was the third position, the position to open. He, will he get a second piece of power? He is, I, I've been enjoying watching the players as their pack is opened, just to see how their body language changes during <laughs> their pack. Oh, our, Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. Uh, a, a blue for a 1-1, one, one, Merfolk. And it was a great combo with Lord of Atlantis because it's the only merfolk in the set. <laughs> Lord of Atlantis plus one plus one to all merfolk, and so that would. Uh, and Lord of Atlantis itself was a lord, so. That card, yes. So. Burrowing. Burrowing is a creature. Mountain walk. Blessing is the rare. Blessing, which was a common, in I think M. Fourteen. Yes, originally printed as a rare for uh, two white mana. It, it's an aura that gives your creature uh, plus one, plus one for every white mana you spend. And even though I'm calling them auras, they're originally enchant creatures. Mm -hmm. Was there? They're talking about Wall of Stone there at the bottom. It's a three mana red zero eight defender. Right. Yeah. We've seen zero six defenders, zero seven defenders. It's so funny to me that like there aren't six and seven power creatures. The walls meant business. <laughs> you were. It's a wall, it's going to have a lot of toughness. Right. Perhaps an exceedingly amount of toughness. Jonathan excitingly takes the wall of stone. Right. Did he also get the wall of ice? There's. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, and, he did, and Jonathan also took the tunnel as perhaps an advanced defensive draft. You know, knowing, seeing the future, seeing wall of stone coming, he, he grabbed the tunnel. Yeah, walls were just a big part of the game back then. I think there was a natural tendency for players to want to turtle up, make sure they never took any damage, because, you know, who would want to take damage? Like, right. that's, that's the equivalent of, like, getting punched in the face. I would never want to do that, so let's hole up with all of our circle of cards and, and circles walls. and walls and make sure I never get hurt. I think, you know, in modern design and modern gameplay is much more okay with the racing and the dealing damage to each other, and it's just because it's the last life point that matters. But back then, the gameplay was definitely... You definitely more every life point Try to never get, never take damage. So life tap, uh, which gives you life whenever a forest becomes tapped. Uh, another magnificent color hoodie. I think the blue uh, pairing to that one was Tsunami, which uh, for four mana destroys all islands which is a little bit better than one life per forest tap. Very fair. Right, we eventually printed, or Wizards, not me, I wasn't working there, but eventually printed the actual green mirror of that card in like Mirage or something like that, where you gain life for islands being tapped. Do you think that was a response to fan demand? <laughs> a response to the OCD box checking of, of designers. Uh, I think this is, is this our fourth sinkhole? Sinkhole's been one of the most popular commons for, yeah. It, it's, and it, and it, it looks like there's a print run there where it seems to always come with that stone rain. I've noticed that multiple times the land, the land destruction aficionado uh, would get sinkhole and stone rain. Still looking for, oh, oh there's there gray ogre is. again. Our, our creature that we get out of this pack is gray ogre. I enjoy how most packs seem to have, oh, regrowth. What's the, the, the early classic magic card? Oh, is that? Wall of Air. Wall of Air. Another the incredibly monolith. difficult to deal with defender. Woo! Oh, a first to live, Tropical Island, a beautiful. Oh, sorry. Oh. Hell yes. photo Right, so there's our first dual land. So there are 10 of these in the set. Uh, and they were, they are lands that have two land types. No other drawback, no nothing, just comes into play. It's an island in a forest, taps for blue or green, the end. Very powerful. Very powerful, yeah. It's we'll be seeing those in the legacy portion of the Pro Tour. Yeah. In the top four coming up here later um, today, this morning. They're, they're, a, they're, a staple, <laughs> they're a staple in formats like legacy, vintage. Uh, often when people are playing Commander or yep. another 
uh, casual formats, you'll you'll often see uh, all the dual lands from out there. My deck is sick. Right, so there's ten of those. And yeah, the every color pair. And so they should show, be showing up twice as often as the laces, for instance. But that's just not not how the right, packs so, are broken here today. Right, so far today, three laces, one dual in. Uh, interestingly, most of the early cards didn't pair across what were known as enemy colors, right? Like blue green, we don't we don't see uh, we only see blue and green fighting, except for really with this the dual lands. Land. Yep. Right. This yeah. This is the only time that uh, blue mana and green mana really combine on a card. Uh, The, the players are congratulating yeah, Philip on yeah, the Tropical second, Island. Oh, is that Earthbind again? All right, here we go. So we're on to Michael's pack. I feel like all the players except Michael are talking about the Tropical Island. Mike, Michael, it's Michael's pack, so he's focusing all his energy. Focus, he's, he, he's, he's trying to, yeah, he's trying to make another dual land appear, or perhaps a piece of power. Right. The, 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 right. I feel like the channel is appropriate because they're trying to channel. Uh, okay, here's our first uncommon, I believe. No, oh, that could have, that, that, that could have been our first uncommon. More camouflage is back. Red Ward is back, Red and, and the rare is Pirate Ship. Ah, a 4-3, taps to deal of damage, and once again, you need to have an island. Island home. Yeah, yeah, yeah you need to have an island to keep it in play or to uh, attack with the Pirate Ship, which from a flavor perspective makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Right? You, if you don't have an island, why? how do you have a ship? And if they don't have an island, how can your pirates invade? So uh, that card is actually modern legal, pirate ship, because it was on the uh, time shifted sheet in Time Spiral. That doesn't see much play in modern. <laughs> uh, it's fringe at best. Fringe at best. Oh yes. I thought you said it's black. But in this pack, it is quite good. I think, even yeah. if you can't attack with it. Well, the fact uh, that it has the the tap for a damage ability means that. Always it's useful. Always useful, even if your opponent doesn't have an island, as long as you do have an island. I, I do. I would enjoy killing pirate ships with Armageddon. <laughs> that was always that was always a fun. Uh, Most a fun creatures answer. can survive Armageddon, but not pirates. Not, not the not the island home creatures. They 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 sink to the bottom of the sea. <laughs> pirate ship, I think, also saw a little bit of a, a rejuvenation with Ixalan and the, the pirates there. Yeah, I'm but sure that uh, many, many copies were snapped up for pirate-themed for, commander decks. Yeah, pirate-themed decks definitely, definitely saw a nice boost. The release of Ixalan and Rivals of Ixalan. Is it a pirate? I, I believe that it is creature-type pirate, yes. The question is, is pirate ship creature-type pirate? <laughs> What's this? Are we looking up? Uh, he was one of the... Uh, Michael wanted to know if pirate ship was in fact creature type pirate. It is human pirate. Human pirate. pirate. Ship. Human pirate. <laughs> That's just speculating that there are humans on the ship. Is that what's going on? Can you, can you see them in the art? No, all? I don't no. see any. There's it's no just, humans it's just in the art. It's a ship with no one on it. I don't think it's been printed with any other art, right? No, nope, that's so it. So we're just really speculating that this was a that's true. a human crewed pirate ship. <coughs> the artist of this card, Tom Warner Strand. We still work, work closely with Tom. He's in our uh, creative and production services department uh, for many, many years. Also, I believe, illustrated uh, Brushland. Blood, Blood Moon. Blood Moon, uh, yeah. Uh, staple. So he's a uh, well known magic artist who has since moved on to other things in the company, but still loves and works on magic every single day. Yeah, he works with a lot of our print vendors uh, to make sure that the quality of the magic cards and oh, four basic lands in a row out of this. Yay! So is this, is this another Michael? sunburst pack? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> is this Michael's uh, second pick? Yes. Oh, so this we're, final? We're, we're in the final group of eight now. Michael is 
gets the first pick, and we're going to go around the table one more time, and then that's going to be that's going to be the draft. Oh, lightning bolt! So once again, we're about to see our first uncommon. It could be still be a basic land, but I shouldn't say that anymore. It's twice now in a row it's been a basic land. What I've speculated on an uncommon. So. Well, the temptation is certainly for these guys to just take the Ooh. coolest cards, the cards they want to add to their collections. They do need to play some games here because there is something at stake. Uh, yeah, that's right. They, there's, I believe, $2,500 for, for first class, yep. as well as is there any, an alpha, alpha starter, starter deck, deck yeah. which is just incredible how few of those are there are left in the world unopened. Yeah, and, I, uh, I think there should be a picture of that next to Scarce. Yeah, here. right. So, right, that's so uh, it looks like you know these guys just taking right. crazy different cards, and the decks are disparate and weird. But do they they are going to have to figure out how to win some games here because there is a, a, a huge prize at stake. Yes, there is an interesting tension of wanting to, cards for your collection and then also wanting to win the event. Now, these players each won a two hundred plus player. Uh, birthday celebration event. Uh, they played, sealed deck. Yeah, six um, rounds of sealed deck, Dominaria or M19. There were even a couple uh, M25 Masters 25th. Oh, yeah. Yeah, on this, uh, yeah, there were some Masters sets. And so they played say, uh, six or eight rounds of sealed plus a top eight draft. Uh, so incredibly long, grueling tournaments to get here. A few of them have even been up all night because uh, players winning the, the last Saturday events, uh, you know, those finished just a few hours ago. Uh, so what the rare in that up? pack was Volcanic Eruption. Oh, yes. Um, I believe it destroys mountains. Right, so it's a X and triple blue. Uh, destroy X target mountains. And then they it deals damage to each creature and each player equal to the number of mountains that are destroyed. So a, a board wipe and a bunch of land destruction. If they have mountains. If somebody has mountains. Right, right. You can destroy your, that's true. Hey, you know what? Not, I don't think I've ever seen anyone destroy their own mountains. <laughs> but you could destroy your own mountains for, right? For a satisfying volcanic eruption. Right, for like an earthquake, hurricane combination there. Do you feel better now? Like, you feel like oh, earthquake and hurricane. Those are another, another pairing. That's, I believe that was Michael's last pack. So now we're on to Philip for, for his final pack. Will he be the one to get the Black Lotus? That's fine, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is, yeah, there's, they're, the, the players are all uh, keeping their wrappers from the event. There's a little. So there's Mons Goblin Raiders, named after. Mons Johnson. Right, still works in R&D. He was one of Richard Garfield's early playtest buddies. And he, he got, he was, had one of the first vanity cards in the game. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few, there's a few in the early sets. Mons is also a joy uh, to play against. He play tests uh, so much magic. I know he's worked on the Transformers game. Du that we Dual Masters. Dual Masters. So he is a grizzled veteran of R and D for sure. If there's our a first, magic, our first Drudge skeleton. Oh, Drudge skeleton, and our first script for it, I yeah, believe. So there's one of the common flyers I was talking about earlier. It's a one one. It's in green of all colors. Ah, uh, yes, known for flying, green is. So strange that it had the most efficient common flyer in the first set. Oh, black, black oh. vice. Come on. Oh, oh nice. mana vault. That is a powerful magic card. Right. For one mana, it, it taps. For oh, an artifact, one mana. Tap. You get three mana, but then it doesn't untap it until you pay four, and you take a damage. Right. Each uh, turn it remains sure. tapped, you take a damage. But that first burst of mana is really what right. it, it, it accelerates you an incredible amount. It's another vintage playable card. Yeah, yeah, it's totally, totally amazing. Uh, so Black Vice, one of the original kind of griefer cards that punished players for having too many cards, too many, so five or more cards in their hand, it did damage to you for each one of those. And we always played in conjunction with things like land destruction to make sure your opponent had tons of cards stranded in their hands. So yeah, also popular and very popular frustrating power. strategy to play against early on. Uh, often very popular in early burn decks. You play one mana, deal, you know, three, six, nine damage just with one black vice. Right. When people would start out playing Mountain Lightning Bolt, 
play Mountain Black Vice was a, a far better start. That, that continued damage. So they're talking about Power Sync, which is the blue card on the table there. An incredibly powerful counterspell variant. It's X in the blue to make your opponent pay X, which we've printed many versions of, but this one. If they fail to if pay. If they didn't pay, if they don't want to pay, it still taps all their mana and it empties their mana pool. So you can't like play a test spell to try to see if you can get your second spell to resolve, because Power Sync will just wipe you out and end your turn, basically. Right. But much like the mana short we saw earlier, it's a good it's very effective, but because you can use it as a counter spell also, that really adds a lot to its uh, playability. All right, the five basic lands remaining. Are we, are we going to speculate on which goes where? Mm. I'm guessing I'm, I'm going to go with the Mount Doom. Let's see. No, he went Swamp. And then Forest. Okay. Oh, there, there's the Mount Doom. It will be last pick, last pick planes. Poor planes. Yeah. Mount has actually been printed uh, in sets. Or that that particular mountain was in Arabian Nights, uh, I believe, yeah. by accident. Yeah, I believe totally by accident. But it's kind of a famous anomaly in Magic, the Arabian Nights mountain. Yeah, it's hard to count the which basic land is most most printed because we've done so many different theme decks and uh, products that it would be quite the Herculean task to figure out just to get the data together. Yeah, yeah. right, right. But a mountain is certainly has plus one in all the basic lands and just being included in sets. Oh, another another war mammoth. That the war mammoth drawing some ooze from the table because they know how just how tough it is to get a reasonable right. attacking creature out of these. Great use for lightning bolt in this. Uh, <laughs> another power sink, yeah. Oh, nice. I, our first icy oh, manipulator. That's icy. That, that's icy. The players don't recognize the the old art, the original art. Oh, the jade statue also gloom. Fork. Fork. So the so, Icy Manipulator, which uh, we've printed recently in Dominaria, it's, it, it was incredibly powerful in that limited format. So you can only imagine how good it must be in this underpowered limited format. Right. And for the player with the Royal Assassin, once again, great combo with the Royal Assassin. Just the ability to tap down a land or an artifact or a creature. It just looks great flexibility for only one mana to use. Yeah. I remember Ice Manipulator being the cause of many arguments because activated abilities weren't very well defined, and there would be big arguments about uh, So the other card they're looking at, um, talking about here is Jade Statue, which is a 3-6 for 4. Right, but it, you can't attack or block with it unless you pay 2, but still, those stats are... Gigantic. Right, compared to everything else that we're seeing as far as creatures go in these packs. Right. I mean, I mean, six toughness is the highest toughness that's not been on a wall so far. Also, interestingly, Icy Manipulator uh, tapped creatures uh, unblocking originally magic wouldn't deal damage. Oh, yeah. That's right. True. And so that was just, I mean, you know, talking about how powerful it is in Dominaria, adding on that ability. Right, so if I blocked your hill giant with my hill giant, you could then tap my hill giant after I blocked and it wouldn't deal damage. Right. That rule is not in effect here. We're using current. Right, we're playing with current card text and current uh, right. current rules. But it was just brutal, just brutal. Right. Uh, there's a little bit of confu confusion about who's picking this. Oh, well, I know I'm playing you. This fork was one of my favorite. Yeah, yeah the rare here was fork. Uh, we've, yeah. we've made many versions of that, so things like twin cast and things like so. It's, it's, it's it copies. Um, Reiterate. Right, copy time. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> copy target instant or sorcery um, for two mana in red. So you can either double up on one of your own spells or surprise your opponent by making a copy of one of theirs. Yeah, and for many spells, you could, uh, uh, if there was a cost associated, like with Goblin Grenade sacking the Goblin uh, to deal five damage, you wouldn't have to sacrifice a Goblin the second time. So for, with Fork, yeah. Yeah, with Fork. So for Goblin Grenade plus a Goblin and uh, fork, you could deal 10 damage for just uh, three mana. 
Uh, oh, Dominant grenade, not not in this set. Though. Not in this set yeah, though, but that was just a. Right, that was definitely that was a, a good, that a good use of times it. Yep. And enjoyed gleefully yeah. sacrificing my goblin. Uh, in this set, typically Fork was uh, he would use to either see it copy an X spell, right? Double up on a fireball or disintegrate, which we still haven't seen. Uh, or, or perhaps copy a time walk or an ancestral recall, which we also were, haven't seen. Which we also right. haven't seen. I'm trying to, I'm trying to summon these cards out of the pack. That's very right? good. I like it. So we're on Dewitt. He's the fourth fourth seat. We have this one plus four more packs. So getting down to the wire here. So far, we've seen a Mox Jet, a Tropical Island, a Mana Vault. Mana Vault. Yeah, Mana Vault. Soul Ring. Demonic Tutor. Demonic Tutor. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. That's Hurricane. And Mana Barbs. Mana Barbs, a 3R for an enchantment. Whenever any player taps a land, they take one damage. So Very brutal card. Yeah. yeah with, uh, in combination with, uh, with Mana Short, you can hit them for a bunch of damage there. Uh, also, just if you're ahead on the board and you put out Mana Barbs, then it's just, yeah, they, oh, I've given strategy. The players overheard me with the, the combo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the... Uh, Hurricane here, an interesting card. It's a green X spell that does X damage to each player and each flying creature. So it is a, a way for green to kind of kill your opponent out of nowhere if you're ahead in the game. Yeah, it's, it's a green X spell as well, Stream of Life. Oh, Another yeah. green X spell. We haven't seen that one. That's the common one that just gains life. But this one... Uh, this one, yeah, ki killing those flyers. We've seen a number of powerful flyers like Hypnotic Specter, Air Elemental. So being able to kill those and also just being able to finish off your opponent if they're at lower life than you. Yep. Also the cause of many draws. That's right? true. If you if you can right. kill them and you at the same time. Right, if you're at one life and they're at eight, you can hurricane for eight and draw the game. Ooh. Which is a great option to have. Was that, was that steel artifact? Yep, that's a kind of gain control. It's an, an aura that gains control of an artifact. I believe the original text was very clear about having to give it back to its original owner at the end of the game. That was a... Right. Some of the, especially with the word steel. So Derek um, took the steel artifact. He's sitting four seats away from Jeremy, who has the icy manipulator, and they're going to be playing in the first round. So that might have been a, a very conscious choice of his to know that I can put this in this main deck and between the mox jet, the icy manipulator, there will be at least something. I can take something. Yeah. That card to take. Right. Yeah. There's just the artifacts <coughs> in early Magic were incredibly powerful. And having the ability to take one is, could be, you know, not only are you up the artifact, but they're they're down it. What happens if you steal his mox? You, you do it. You do if you steal his mox, you do have to give it back. It, it says on the card. It, said, yeah. it says on the card. This is Haymon's uh, final pack. He's he'll be he'll have had six chances at piece it's, of power. So the the, uh, the the beta printing of steel artifact says you know you control target artifact until enchantment is discarded or game ends. So yes, yeah. you have to give it back. Right, it you says have, right there. Right, it's the very card. clear. Did, uh, did control magic also have that text? I'm sure. Uh, I, it should. It should uh, I won't say I'm sure because they did word cards oh, very differently right. even when they did similar <laughs> things. For me personally, one of the cards I'd be most excited to see is uh, a Beta Plateau. Uh, it has art that's unique to the early sets. Right. We saw one of those in Vegas. Uh, right. So Control Magic does have this. Oh, oh, Control Magic. Oh, Craw Worm. 6-4 for 4 mana and 2 green. Right. 6 mana, 6, six mana total. Four. That was the common to own when you first started out, as far as creatures went. Right. Nothing you would, you comes would trade close for to it, stat-wise. Nothing comes close. So that's the that's the colossal dread maw of early magic right there. Conversion. Nice. Oh. Oh, Bayou. Yeah. Bayou. Nice. Green black dual land. Our second duel. Right. We had a tropical island earlier, and now a bayou. Uh, all. All. Let's talk about that frame. The bayou? 
by you, yeah. It's hypnotic. It is hypnotic. It, it has a swirl. One of the things right, I so will Haymon, say about it... Haymon took the Bayou. I think he's done better than his lightning bolt last he has, time. He has exceeded the lightning bolt last time by... Uh, by... I feel like the, that frame was really the inspiration for us doing... Trying different and new and innovative things with frames. Like my first right. So there, are, Devin took the crawworm second. Um, he's already, he was joshing with uh, Haymont about why didn't he pass him the Bayou and take a playable card. But uh, Devin's deck's looking pretty good. It's just full of mid-range red and green creatures, a couple lightning bolts. I know he's upset he didn't get any of the power cards yet, but uh, I actually kind of like his his deck. Like yeah. His actual. I need to win games of Magic. He's got a bunch of three power guys, bolts, crawworm. Yeah, a yeah. lot of a lot of playables for beta. Wait, I need to read stat people. It's a green card. <laughs> There's six basic lands left. Gonna be the last six picks here in the pack. I always loved the lands when I, when I first started playing. Really? It just, it just it just yeah. I mean, for me, it's like oh Savannah. My daughter's middle name is Savannah because oh, wow. yeah. My, I did admit to my wife that it was a magic card after she had agreed to it. it was only after <laughs> she had agreed to it. Uh, that is funny. Yeah. Yeah. So we often hear stories about players not appreciating dual lands when they're new, right? Right. Like, yeah. Like our, our, our buddy Worth Wolpert, who used to work at much. Wizards, talked about how he'd get so annoyed at owning them that he would burn them. Oh uh, yeah, unbelievable. Like that. That is just a, I would a bring famous that up. story about Worth. Uh, you know, I don't know how, how many. Beta dual lands he must have taken out of circulation through his antics, uh, unknowing you know how how scarce they would become. Uh, but yeah, I I I kept mine. I didn't really think they were amazing, but I I, I realized their value in playing the game. Oh, I think that's our first dark ritual. But it sounds like you you knew right away they were they were legit, huh? The dual lands. Yeah, I just. I mean, I mean, I was I was not good at magic, but I really was like, oh, I want to play more colors in these dual lands. They helped me do that. I think I appreciated those faster than uh, the moxes, for instance. Oh, fire elemental. Oh, there, there's a there was a water elemental. Fire elemental. So if you've been playing M19, you've experienced or or dominaria fire elemental, and that that, that's, that's where it came from. That's what, right. Oh yeah. Oh, an aspect of the wolf. Uh, <laughs> De definitely has been outdone since. Uh, right, so Aspect of Wolf was like Blanchwood Armor, which is in M19, except it only gives half as much power and toughness bonus. So you do save a mana. It's only two mana to cast. Uh, right. So that is. Uh, that's a that's the rare. That's the rare. Right, so Dwarven Demolition Team, three mana, one one, taps to destroy a wall. And we've seen just how many walls there are, so right. maybe that little guy. Yeah, have some answers. Can can do some work here. There's a stream of. Or is that a tranquility? I think it's a. I think that's a stream of life. That's tranquility. That green card at the top. So that destroys all enchantments for three mana. I mean, we've seen just a, a whole bunch of enchantments. Definitely one of the good answers to circle of protection. Uh, we also see two uh, different lucky charms, as they were originally referred to, Dark Ritual and Giant Growth. No, those aren't. No, the boons. The, the boons, right. sorry. The the boons, lucky yes. charms are the, uh, yeah. the crystal the, rods. The crystal rods, yes, we, which we've seen a number of those as well. Uh, right, so there, that's another cycle. We were talking about how many of those were. So there were boons. Right, One boons. mana instance. Uh, so lightning bolt but deals three, three damage. damage. Giant Growth, plus three, plus three. Uh, dark dark ritual. ritual, three mana. Healing Stab, which I don't think you've seen yet. I don't think so. Which no. is prevent three damage. Or and then, three life. So those are four commons. And then there was one that started a common that was moved up to rare. The Ancestral Recall. The blue one, right? Yeah. Drawing three cards. That is... Right, so the, the early playtesters did realize that cards were the currency of this game. And that more than mana, more than life, more than damage. Three cards is just an incredible exchange for one mana. Uh, 
Oh. So DeWitt got the plague rats out of that pack. So that, we were talking about the how there were no uh, four of rule early on. Right. So plague rats is a three mana one one that gets plus one plus one for each other plague rats you control. So people would build decks that were just swamps and plague rats. Yes, maybe some dark rituals thrown in. Yeah, or black lotuses if you were lucky. Uh, yeah, so uh, you could end up with eight eight plague rats. Yeah. Something like that we've, by we've, just we've spamming the board with those. We've since sort of recreated that with Relentless Rats. So right. we, we added reaction. on the text that ignores the four of rules specifically for uh, the named card. Right. Rat Colony in uh, Dominaria similarly has that, that line of text. Uh, I talked with one of the early playtesters, uh, Charlie Catino, and he would tell me about without the four of rule, he tried uh, Merfolk of the Pearl Trident with Lords of Atlantis. Right. And so that was how you would. Uh, Put in a bunch of one one merfolk, you have the lord, and all of a sudden they're they're quite sizable, far size, bigger than most of the creatures we've seen. Right, and back then Lord of Atlantis itself was not a merfolk. Not a merfolk. So yeah, you needed both of those to 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 get the the power buff. Nowadays, two Lord of Atlantises pump each other. That was not the case back then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Here we see a blue elemental blast and another crawl worm. The player to call you from beyond the black fireball has an is next spell that does damage. Phantasmal terrain. Oh, Earth, oh, Earth Elemental. Four, five, vanilla. There's Castle. Castle. Oh, Anime Dead. That's an Anime Dead, a powerful card. Takes any creature Ooh. out of your graveyard. Oh, Word of Command. Oh, boy. Oh. Uh, definitely on Word of Lightning. That one's so complicated. The, the Word of Command. Uh, the yeah. rare. You play your spell. I still don't. I didn't know what Word of Command did back when I started playing Magic. I still don't know. They're, they're now reading the, the Oracle text. It keeps going. The, the judge has read a lot of words, and I still have no. So what, what is it? That, what is attempting to convey is it's a two mana black instant that lets you look at your opponent's hand and force them to play a card. But does it actually do that practically often? There's a lot of conditions Unlikely. that need to be met. Unlikely. They have to. Right. So they were talking about if 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 you made them play a creature, do you get the creature? No. You just made them play their creature. You force uh, their hand. Right. So work. the best case scenario is probably getting them to use a removal spell on one of their own creatures. But the weird thing is, like, they could just cast. If it's a, it's when an instant, it's, they would just cast it themselves. In response. Right. And they get priority on their own turn. So there's just a lot of there's a lot a lot of conditions and yeah. to make this card function well. But it's cool. It's old. It's wacky. It's rare. So the art is what I'm afraid to see in the dark, though. Two eyeballs. Two eyeballs staring out at me. I, just I think the story, the, the the rumor I've heard about the art for this card is like they needed something at the last minute. And they were like literally hours from going to press or something like that. So Jesper Mirfors, who was the art director at the time, just whipped, whipped, whipped this up. Yeah. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's certainly what I've heard. Uh, castle. Oh, Castle, an enchantment. Uh, plus O plus two uh, for untapped creatures, uh, and also I believe it specified they couldn't be attacking you know, in the original. Uh, it I'll did specify that, but that text has since been taken off the card, so we are going to be playing with the current wording. If you happen to have a vigilance creature, although once again that wasn't vigilance at the time, it was just right. It j that right. Untapped creatures control get plus O plus two. Oracle wording on castle, that second part is not there. Just they plus get plus O plus two if they're untapped, period, even if they're attacking. Oh, that's yeah. And yeah. Your Angel would keep it? Yeah. Your Sarah Angel would keep it. Right. So, that was a, a conscious choice when they were, I think, printing yeah. fourth or sixth or something like that. They took clunky words off cards. It's not something we would do nowadays, but uh, things like flying carpet and castle that had these kind of downside clauses on them. They just took those off when they reprinted them. So we're right. going to be playing with the, the, the current wording. There were some interesting decisions there too, right? With Winter Orb and Howling Mine, uh, both two mana artifacts that uh, uh, 
Polymer shut draws off. a card well, and yeah, yeah. Winter Orb uh, prevents, prevents lands from untapping. They would shut off with like an icy manipulator, uh, but one of them changed that it doesn't shut off and the other one but does. We have actually since reverted Winter Orb to its original wording, right. mostly on player demand. Yeah, that was so controversial for a long yeah, time. Yep. All right. So who, who's, whose pick are we on here? This is it, huh? This is it. We're on the last This is our pack. last this chance. Is Jonathan's for last black shot. Lotus. No fireball, no counter spell. There's a wall of wood. Well, this has been fun. Uh, it, it, uh, both tense and exciting, and. Oh, uh, wood. But very good natured all at the same time. These guys are having a great time. Yeah. I'm having a great time watching it. There's, there's great, great banter, you can tell. They, they called themselves Beta Brothers before the draft uh, began. So, I mean, it is a unique experience that really uh, is once in a lifetime, except for right. Haymon. It's done this twice. All right, I mean, where are we? Wow. The Celestial Prism? Is that yep, the? Celestial Prism, a mana fixing artifact, Wall of Water, which is another tough to the Wall of Fire, those cards are two mirrors of each other. Uh, righteous bodyguard. Veteran, oh, bodyguard. veteran, veteran bodyguard. Excuse me. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> I think it's the Oracle veteran bodyguard. I'm pretty sure what it does, but it's really good. For some reason, I thought it was going to be righteousness. I suppose. <laughs> I have two walls in this pack: Wall of Fire, which uh, uh, Fire Breeze. It's an O five for three, right? Yeah. Which and for R, you can give it uh, plus one plus O. It was often a popular combo with like such animate wall right. style cards. Um, and wall of Water. With the same exact card, except blue. Except blue, Water Breeze. And they're, they came in next to each other in the pack. Uh, so he does take the Bodyguard. And then Hill Giant. And so Veteran Bodyguard's a 5 mana 2 5 that, uh, as long as it's untapped, any damage will be dealt to you by unblocked creatures. It's instead dealt to the Veteran Bodyguard. So he take, takes the damage for you. Right, uh, unlike the Simulacrum, which you take the damage and then it. It's actually here just immediately. The damage immediately applied to Veteran Bodyguard. Right, right. right. And, that, and, and with five toughness, that's that could prevent most. Right, Craw Worm still beats this guy up, but most other attackers are not going to kill the right. Veteran Bodyguard. Right, plus you can just block the creature if it's a ground creature. Right, so if they attack so you with a, an Iron Claw Orcs or something like that, and right. just, just eat it. But it's a, it's a great answer to some of the flyers that we've seen. Just right, Phantom Monster is not going to damage you as long as you have Veteran Bodyguard. You can eventually overwhelm it with enough enough flyers for sure. So we get, we saw no no fireballs, no no disintegrates. Some of the early other drafts, like in Vegas, there were lots of those, and games would end often with large X spells killing yeah. the players. But that's not going to be happening here. Not, yeah, definitely today we, we saw more pestilence. Right, we've seen we've seen drain life and howl from beyond and, and hurricane. So there's still cards that can do that, but but not the not the common red ones. Yeah, in red we saw, I think, two lightning bolts in, instead. Oh. And there's at least three, I guess. Oh, yeah, three lightning bolts, yeah. the third lightning bolt. That seems like the best source of damage might be that dingus egg with all the stone rains and sinkholes uh, <laughs> we saw. Two, two damage up there. Very nice.